Let's give the confession of faith. Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Even our believers overseas, let's say this. Let us worship with an open heart. Today's message is entitled The Platform of Answers to Enlarge the Tent. In 2024, God gave us a covenant, enlarge the place of your tent. He gave us this message that will be proclaimed and that will be fulfilled. It was from Isaiah 54, verse 2. He promised to establish the two through seven bards and that will possess all nations. And when we take on the challenge of faith that enlarges our tent, that challenge is Is a, is a channel for us to receive these answers, to receive the answers that God has prepared. And when we take on the challenge of faith, God says, I will enlarge the place of your tent. That's what God promised us. But if you do not challenge it, then it means that you won't receive those answers. Then, okay, you can live your life not receiving those answers. But God promised us that He will enlarge our tents. So then how must we possess this. God tells the church to enlarge the church's tent. And what is the method by which the church's tent can be enlarged? It is through the Start 10,000 movement. And enlarge the tent of the field, it is the 4,000 partisan movement. And the how can we enlarge the partisan of, uh, of two, 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 two through seven nations? It is through the 237 healing movement. He has already taught us the channel for answers. so that we may be able to do world evangelization even while sitting down. While you attend e one church, you are able to embrace all the souls in the world and pray for them. God has already given us all that message. All you need to do is receive it with faith. I believe that that is when it will become a channel for answers. This year's New Year's message was enlarge the place of your tent as you hold on to the covenant and concentrate and challenge towards that. you will experience God's scale. Each individual has a different scale. Each and everyone has a different vessel. And so experience you, the, your scale being enlarged to God's scale and have the evidence of building an eternal partisan. God, may I, may I be able to experience God's scale? During the Friar prayer meeting, the message discussed the Yewon unity and how it needs to become a good and pleasant unity. Good and pleasant unity. The Yewon unity needs to become a good and pleasant unity in their district, in their department, in their region, whatever it may be. It must become a good and pleasant oneness and receive this answer. Today's message reveals the platform of answers to enlarge that very tent. We must, be able, we must be equipped with a spiritual platform to experience answers. And today's message is about being equipped with that platform. Living a walk of faith is not difficult. God doesn't want you to live a difficult walk of faith. It only requires following the stream of the word being proclaimed from the pulpit. If you cannot understand it once, then you just need to listen twice. If you can't understand it twice, then you, can, you just have to listen to it a third time. And the Holy Spirit will work upon you because all you need to do is follow the pulpit. It's not, you, it doesn't require for you to study, do research, and use your own brain and thoughts. All you need to do is just follow the pulpit, and that's the end of it. Why has God allowed you to live a walk of faith at Yewon Church? There are many other churches, you know. The Kangsa region has many churches. But why was it Yewon Church that you have come to to live a walk of faith? Why has God allowed you to come to Yewon Church? So that you may follow Yewon Pulpit's message. So that you may live a life that follows Yewon's pulpit message. Therefore, it's never too much to emphasize for you to be with the pulpit message 24 hours. Do not give excuses. There is no need for other things. Those are all things that are being deceived by Satan. You're just deceiving yourself. When you become 24 hours with the pulpit message, then 
You are no longer influenced by your situation, by your environment, problems, and incidents. The things that Satan has scattered within me, starting from within me, starting from my family, my, my workplace, my environment, my business. As long as you hold on to the public message, you're no longer influenced by all that. You're not influenced by your environment. People who are influenced by their environment, they he hear what others say and they stumble. And then when problems come, they give up. How would they be able to live a walk of faith that cannot be continued? May you live a life that creates a 25th hour eternal life masterpiece in your life. There is a saying, a yesterday's tightly tied knot becomes loose and unraveled easily if left alone. Just as one must constantly tighten a knot, a person must repeatedly reaffirm their determined actions daily to remain unchanged. This clearly shows us why we must be why we must be with the pulpit for 24 hours. Satan will attack you relentlessly to separate you from the covenant. Think about this carefully. You come to church and you worship after worship and you leave the church and you have your own social life. Do you really live a life that has something to do with the covenant? Do you apply the Pope message into your heart and into your life? Most people can't. Why? Because they receive Satan's attacks. Immediately, they hold on to the things that are visible, the things that transpire before them. And they're dragged by that. Satan relentlessly attacks us. The moment you hold on to the word, the moment you hold on to the covenant, you experience a different dimension of answers. And therefore, to block that from happening, Satan works 24 hours. So he tries all he can do to hinder you from receiving grace. And even if you're to receive grace so that you may not be apply that word, so that you may forget that word. And that's why people who've gone to church for decades, everything's a joke. They have no message in them. They went, they've been attending church for decades, and yet a spiritual conversation cannot take place and even when you attempt to have a, a conversation with the word they have no word it's mostly like that because they were all attacked by saints so may you listen to this carefully why am oh, i don't ha have any happiness thanksgiving joy and peace and why i'm not deeply moved by the word you have to think about that how could it be that you are at the same level of unbelievers you must be able to say, oh, anyone in the world as happy as me, come forth. That's how much happiness and peace you must have within you. That's why Apostle Paul em emphasizes in P 1 Peter 5, 8-9, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith. The devil roams around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It's like a hungry beast searching for prey. And so, does he devour? Does he devour Buddhists? Does he de those who worship other idols? No, those are all the same. And so, but he, he looks for those he looks for those who actually hold on to the correct gospel. He roams around looking for those who, may, he, he, who he may devour. The term devil used here is interpreted as the one who sets snares. Saint's main strategy is, for, is to prevent us from experiencing the covenant being fulfilled. He prevents us from experiencing the blessing and the answer of the covenant being fulfilled. He prevents us from realizing, oh wow, the word is fulfilled. When we follow the word, God works this way. Satan prevents us from experiencing that. That's his main strategy. Therefore, we must be spiritually vigilant like watchmen. We must be spiritually awake. In other words, you must receive grace from the word. You must receive grace from the word 
May everyone in 2024, in every moment and every day, hold on to the covenant of enlarge the place of your tent. I was so taken aback and surprised when I heard the choir. How is it that they made this song that, you know, that has the, the, all the core points of our New Year's message and they sing it with such power. I hope you sing this often. You know, it may be difficult, but I think the more you sing, it'll become easier to sing. I'm sure it'll become easier. It was the more you sing it, the more easier it'll become. Even with just the phrase, enlarge the place of your tent, may your souls be revived. It has the power to change your thought. It has the power to change your fate and destiny. All your negative thoughts and all your unimportant thoughts and all the things that made you despair and discouraged it will it, can, the, it has a power to revive all of that and restore all of that enlarge the place of your tent even if you had given up in all things as you listen to this message may you be newly revived in every moment as you confess this you must be strengthened when various problems and incidents come and inside various circumstances may you hold on to this covenant and apply it and move forward to the place of answers in today's passage, Jesus proclaims the gospel of heaven through the parables of the, the seeds that fell on four soils. The four types of soil mentioned are the soil along the path, rocky ground, thorny ground, and good soil. So Jesus is saying and referring to the four types of hearts or four types of soils that people have. The seed here represents the word of God, the gospel. It's the word of God. And the soul refers to one's heart that receives the word. And through this parable, we must discover what the platform masters that enlarge the tent is. I bless all Yewon believers in the name of the Lord that in 2024, all believers may discover the platform of answers that bears fruit 30-fold, 60-fold, and 100 form, and firmly establish an eternal partisan through today's word. Point number one, attempt of sowing seeds, verses 1 to 2 read, Again, he began to teach beside the sea, and a very large crowd gathered around him so that he got into a boat and sat in it on the sea. And the whole crowd was beside the sea on the land. And he was teaching them many things in parables. And in his teaching, he said to them, Jesus often used parables as a main method to teach the gospel of heaven to the crowds. In Matthew 13, 34, it is noted that Jesus did not speak to the people without using a parable. That's the extent of how much Jesus used parables in his teachings. It is generally believed that Jesus spoke about 48 par parables in his teachings. The term parable comes from the Greek word parabole, which means to throw alongside. So it suggests a method of comparing and understanding one thing by placing it next to another. It helps one understand something. Specifically, Jesus, he took familiar elements from the lives of the Israelites from the Jewish people, such as nature, nature daily routines, customs, and traditions as a subject of his parable so that they may easily understand so that they may more easily understand and comprehend the message of the kingdom of God so that to us who live a physical life when he tries to talk to us about the kingdom of God that is invisible it may be difficult and therefore for to 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 narrow that gap Jesus made these parables so that we may understand the message of the kingdom of God verses 3 to 4 reads it says a sower went out to sow so what is most important is sowing the sowing seeds to sow seeds refers to the proclamation of the word the gospel is not a form of begging the gospel is not something for you to beg it is the evangelism is not a form of begging preaching a sermon is not a form of begging either it's a declaration to proclaim the word 
Whether they listen or not, it's a preaching. Whether they listen or not, it's being preached. That's what the prophets did. After Jeremiah, he, he preached and he proclaimed the prophecies. And so prophets, they were stoned. Even as they were being stoned, they still proclaimed and declared it. The, 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 the Satan, he tries to attack this. If you look at the passage, it says that all seeds were scattered on the roadside, on rocky ground, among thorns, and on good soil. It doesn't matter because the seeds were scattered all over. Who would scatter the seeds on the roadside? And so, Israel, Israelites, they used to put a sack of seeds on the back of a donkey and put holes on it, and so that the, as the donkey would trot along, the, the seeds would just scatter all, all around. So sometimes it would fall into the roadside, it would fall onto thorny ground and on rocky ground. And so because it was something that they all did and practiced, this implies that regardless of whether people receive it or not, the word must be scattered, must be sown. Ezekiel chapter 3 verse 1, it says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest. Eat the scroll and go speak to the house of Israel. And verse 11 says, and go to the exiles, to your people, and speak to them, and say to them, Thus says the Lord God, whether they hear or refuse to hear. It means just, just to proclaim it. The scroll refers to the word of God here. First, it is crucial for us to eat, to take the word of God. To eat is most important. Through the pulpit, you must continue eating the word. It is the food for your soul. Just as we live by eating the, the food for our spirit, our soul is the eternal word. My soul needs to eat in order to be strengthened. Our physical bodies are strengthened when we eat, but just as, and likewise, our hearts, our souls need to eat to be able to obey God. And we need the strength because you need to eat the word to be strengthened. And when, you, when your soul is strengthened, everything else follows. And with that strength, you must go and speak. What are we to speak about? We need to speak about the problems of Genesis chapter 3, the fundamental issues of human life, the problem of being separate from God, the problem of sin, the problem of Satan, the problem that no one can escape on their own, the problem of sin. No one can escape from this. Satan is the, the prince of the air and he's hold, he has seized control of all cultures and the trends of the world. How, with what power can we overcome him? We can't overcome him with the power of man. No matter how much wealth or power one may have, regardless of how profound one's knowledge is and even, one tra even if one diligently trains their morals and cultivates virtues, mankind that has become a sinner cannot solve the problems of sin and eternal consequences on their own. All human beings born as descendants of Adam are, des are destined to wander. No matter how much money they make, look at celebrities, they make a lot of money. And look at politicians, no matter how much power and authority they may have, look at the results they have. People in the world who may have a lot of money, look at their results. You, you see it, how they live. In the end, they are bound to wander and, and are led to eternal destruction, and they cannot come out of this. Therefore, God presented us with the unique way. There's only one way. It is Jesus Christ. There's only one way. There is no other way. There's only one way. What did Jesus come to do? He came to solve all the problems of life, and He is the Christ. If Buddha is Christ, if Muhammad is Christ, then we should have believed in that. But only Jesus is the Christ, and therefore we believe in Jesus. What did Jesus do? He solved the problems of being separate from God, the problem of sin, and the problem of Satan, those three problems. 
politicians before you become president. These, thing, these things must be resolved first. The prophet to become to be to meet God, and the priest and the and the king. That is Jesus, and on the cross he said, "It is finished." To tell us, die. All problems of life has been resolved. He says. How do you know that when you believe in Jesus, everything has become resolved? And so there is a, a prominent figure who has studied, he has studied humanity, and he's written many books. But this individual, after he, all his research and studies about humanity, his conclusion was that When Jesus says that he has finished all things, that it is, and when he said it is finished on the cross, that is the absolute and complete answer. And so I was reading a book in the past week. There, there is a book, a, there, there's a book by that was written. It was a book that was translated. The greatest scholar. And so he had written this book and he and he came to the conclusion that Jesus has already finished everything that it was all that it was all finished because he resurrected from the dead. He gave us eternal life. He opened the way for us to meet God, and that is why we're able to worship. How, can, how is it that we are able to worship before God when all we have done for the past week is sin, but through the blood of Jesus Christ, we receive the forgiveness of sins, and we are able to worship God. He has opened the way for us to be able to worship God, and He has given us eternal life. The spiritual truth he has opened the way for us to receive eternal life. But there are so many people who is yet to hear this, even our families. There are many people, even in our families, that have not heard this yet. And that's why in 2024, we aim to establish a bone and flesh evangelism team to achieve household evangelization. The choir, they sang, the praise that they sang already said this. And it doesn't have to be limited to your blood-related rel relatives. It could be your friends, your acquaintances, or colleagues. That could be the subjects of this. And if you find it hard to personally deliver the message, you could ask a church officer, a church worker, and that person can connect with them. And, and, and they can hear the message that way. That's how you can throw the rope of life to them. Because... And that's why the team of three, you can't do this alone. It doesn't have to be necessarily three, but it could be two people. But as long as you make a team, a form a team for the purpose of saving lives, we call that the team of three ministry. We must find a way to sow the seed of the gospel so that everyone, by any means possible, can hear the true gospel that Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all life problems. A proverb of goes, even the salt in the pantry needs to be put into a soup pot to be salty. No matter how close the salt may be to the soup pot, unless it's put into the pot, the soup will be bland. Right? And you need to first use it for it to bring out the taste. It goes the same for the gospel. There's no reason or no need for you to be worried or be anxious. Just go ahead and scatter it. Sow the seed of the gospel because then the parts of Christ will be established in the field. Once you sow it, the Holy Spirit will do the following things. By shining the light of Christ, the darkness inside that individual, inside the field will all retreat. Because the light of Christ shines upon the place, all the darkness will have no choice but to retreat. 
I am very, very grateful because many individuals and church workers have shown this kind of commitment and initiative until now. The individuals I love the most are those who share the gospel, those who are used for the works of saving lives. I love them so much. In each department, all the associate pastors that bring about revival, they're such precious individuals. As you see the power of the gospel each day, think about how pleased God may be when these souls return to the Lord. These souls are most precious. And therefore, in 2024, may you take one more step further and may and make the covenant a challenge of sowing the seed of the word and enlarge the place of your tent. Point number two, good soil that yields grain. It is important that we sow the seeds of the gospel, and that is the platform of answers. However, there's another answer platform that enlarges the place of our tent. First, we must we must be the good soil that receives God's word and produces grain. We have to become the good soil. Our hearts must become the good soil. Verses 10 through 20 of today's passage records Jesus giving a spiritual interpretation of the parable of the sower to his disciples. Looking at this content, we can see what prevents us from producing grain when we receive God's word. Verse 15, And these are the ones along the path where the word is sown. When they hear, Satan immediately comes and takes away the word that is sown in them. The word had been sowed, but this word was was sowed in along the path. But the heart that is along the path refers to a state where the heart is hardened, it's, it's arrogant, it's filled with the things of the world. It's And therefore, it's like along the path where people walk by. Do you think seeds will grow in that the heart is so hardened simply put ones who are bound by their own experience bias prejudice and fixed ideas though in those people's hearts the word cannot enter because these things have taken place already it's quite fearsome what kind of thoughts you may have these people must change their life standards to God's word. No longer my standards, my bias, my fixed ideas, because they hold on to that. There's no space for the word of God to enter. Even if they had been going to church for 30 years, it's still all about their own standards. It's not the standard of God's word. And so starting this year, may you change your life standards to God's word. You must completely change it. Wow, you've changed. The way you talk has changed. To the point where people around you are surprised. You need to change that much. Oh, why is why are things not working for me? Why am I not being used? Why am I not being used for world evangelization? You don't have to say that. If you receive grace from the word, <laughs> then that will be the end. Isaiah 40 verse 8 reads, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Only the word lasts forever. When it comes to what people say, it may change today and tomorrow. But the word of God is will stand forever. Hebrews 13.8 also reads, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever. Jesus is the same forever. But the thoughts I have are not everlasting. And therefore, that is why you must change your thoughts. And so only the word of our Lord God and only Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Let's look at verse 16 of today's passage. And these are the ones sown on rocky ground, the ones who, when they hear the word, immediately receive it with joy. Verse 17, And they have no root in themselves, but endure for a while. Then when tribulation or persecution arises on account of the word, immediately they fall away. The heart that is like rocky ground may accept the word, but the and it's better than along the path. They may accept the word, but the roots of faith are not deep enough. 
So they received grace and they went home and then they're faced with problems or incidents. They received grace and they say, oh, why, are, why am I faced with all these problems or incidents? They're easily deceived and, and they stumble at the face of problems and incidents. And that is what is important, is opening the spiritual eyes. You must be able to interpret things spiritually, everything spiritually. Why is that person like that to me? Why have these problems occurred to me? You must spiritually interpret those things for you to not be deceived by Satan. Don't be moved by your emotions. But you must be able to see God's plan behind the problems and events before you. If you look at Job 23 verse 10, Job had, uh, had experienced all various problems and trials that we can't even imagine, but this was the confession he made. He says, but he knows the way that I take. When he has tried me, I shall come out as gold. He was faced with difficulties, with unfair incidents, but because of that, he did not sue, he did not complain because those are all useless. But he says, this is what God has done. And because this is something that God has done, and when he has tried me this way and that, I shall come out as gold, he confesses. Continuing in verses 13 and 14, Job makes a more realistic confession of why we should not fall into temptation or stumble. He says, but he is unchangeable, and who can turn him back? What he desires, that he does, for he will complete what he appoints for me. God, if he wills it, he does it. And he will in the end make it into a blessing. In other words, God's will and absolute, there is God's will and absolute plan for you, and his plan will surely be fulfilled. And something that you must not lose hold of is Romans 8 28. Ultimately, all your difficulties, your persecutions, your pain, God works together for good. He makes all things good. That's what happens to a child of God. For unbelievers, this does not apply to them. But for a child of God, this does apply to you. God who works for good, we must believe in Him. And that is the end of everything. May you open such eyes of faith. Look at verse 18 to 19. And others are the ones sown among thorns. There are those who hear the word. But the cares of the world and the deceitfulness of rich riches and the desires for other things enter in and choke the word, and it proves unfruitful. The heart that is like thorny ground may have deeper roots than rocky ground, but even if they have these roots down, the problem is the depth is not deep enough to fully bear fruit. It may grow up to a certain point, but there are thorns on the top. So as they come out, they're pricked by these thorns and it hurts. And because of the thorns, they stop growing. They just stop growing. And that's why there are many people who used to come to church, but they fell into trial and they stopped coming to church. And so if you walk down the streets, and you'll realize that many of them had once gone to church, but why do they? Why have they stopped going to church? Because they've fallen into trial, and they're discouraged. And that's why Jesus' parable is such a good parable. Jesus describes that these thorns are the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, and the desires for other things. What are the introductory things? Those are the things that are visible, the things that are only temporary. But because of those introductory things, we lose the main points because the main points are invisible. It's the Word of God. We lose hold of the main points. Human beings are spiritual beings. Even though they have physical bodies, what the, uh, the main point is the f spiritual things. But because the spiritual things are invisible, they only live for the introductory things and that's how they end their lives. What is that? That is Satan's strategy. Satan's, Satan already knows the weaknesses and the strengths of each individual, and he uses that. And he hinders us from the word becoming deeply rooted within us. 
Pastor Oswald Chambers, renowned for writing the book My Utmost for His, Hi- for His Highest, speaks about worry this way. He says, All our fret and worry are caused by calculating without God. God is taken out of the, out of the form, formula of the equation. So the reason why we have fret and worry is because we calculate without God and that's why we always fight and that's why there's conflict because there is no God. Isn't that true? Do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. But enjoy the blessing of with Emmanuel and oneness of the triune God. Let's look at verse 20. But those that were sown on the good soil are the ones who hear the word and accept it and bear fruit thirtyfold and sixtyfold and a hundredfold. Ultimately, Jesus emphasizes putting aside everything that hinders us from bearing fruit and says the key to the platform of the answer to enlarge our tent is for the word of God to become our imprint root and nature. If this happens, then we bear fruit and grain 30-fold, 60-fold, or 100-fold. And we experience the evidence of the enlargement of our tents. The three words in verse 20, it says, Hear, accept, and produce. These three words are all written in the present tense. They're all written in the present tense. This implies we should not stop to by we should not stop listening to God's word once, but we must continuously receive the word and apply it in our daily lives. We must continuously receive the word and apply it. If it doesn't work, then we must continuously receive it and do it again and do it again. May all the believers of Yewon Church in 2024, may all of you through the pulpit message bear fruits a hundredfold. And so it's not just a hundredfold when there's fruit, when a tree bears fruit, it's only a hundred fruits. No, there's thousands of fruits. What this means is that there is a tremendous blessing of God that awaits you. But what's important is the heart, the soil of your heart. May you establish the platform of answer and become main figures of the fulfillment of the covenant. There is an important element and experience the growth of answers and faith when we walk, when we live our walk of faith, and that is interest. Interest means to be attracted to to something and pay attention to it. And so, how much I, how much interest I have on the pulpit. How much interest I have on the position, the rules have been given to me. According to that, your fruits, your results will follow. In one of the four books and three classics, specifically in the great learning, there is a saying, if it is not in your mind, You cannot see it even if you see it. You cannot hear it even if you hear it. And you do not know the taste even if you eat it. It's true. You will will see, hear, and experience only those things that you are interested in. And so we did not read the entire passage, but I'll read this to you. And when he was alone, those around him with the twelve asked him about the parables. And he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. The disciples did not really understand what this parable meant. So Jesus, they, they asked Jesus, And so he said to them, To you has been given the secret of the kingdom of God. But for those outside, everything is in parables, so that they may indeed see but not perceive, and may indeed hear but not understand, lest they should turn and be forgiven. This is very important. Those who are not saved will not understand these parables. Even if they were to hear it every day, 
they they cannot understand it. And I'm sorry to say this, but it was made so they may not understand it. Why is that? Because they have not received the forgiveness of their sins. That's what Jesus said. In 2024, I hope that you focus all your attention on the pulpit and take an interest in the positions and rules given to you and have an interest in your work and your field. Then your spiritual eyes will be opened. You will start to see what it is you must do. And surely there will be a part that God makes clear in your hearts and thoughts. God will allow you to realize that. Then all you need to do is actualize that. All you need to do is obey. May all the members of Yewon Church in the, enjoy the 24-hour blessing in which the word becomes our imprint root and nature and build an unbreakable eternal partisan in our lives. Let us pray. Father God, may all the believers of Yewon Church in this new year live a different life that has from before and experience the answer, the platform answers to enlarge their tents. May the at attempt of sowing seeds begin and may they become good soil that yields grain and fruit and may they bear a 34, 60-fold and 100-fold answer. We pray this in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.